Angeles, and welcome to What's That? For brand spanking new users of Adobe Captivate. Today's topic, what is a caption? A caption, in fact, is an element used in your Adobe Captivate projects. You can come over to the left-hand side, find the toolbar, and insert a text caption. You simply click this button to insert a new text caption. You probably have already noticed that when that text caption comes in, there's some text in there. You can type anything you want. You could type, what's that? With a big old question mark. Now we may not like the way that that appears and that's why we have the property inspector over here on the right hand side. You may have noticed earlier that the property inspector changed when I selected this object. If I go back and select the slide, the whole object, then you'll see the property inspector displays the properties of the slide. But if I click on or select the text object, then I'll be able to see the properties of the text object. Those properties are basically divided into three sections. Those three sections are how it looks, containing the general character and format properties, how it behaves, containing the timing transition properties and how it sounds the audio properties and then finally the position and size of the object on the screen and you might say oh wait 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 that's actually four different things well I think the position and size is really about how it looks right so those three basic clusters of properties now you're going to notice that each of those properties exists here in these accordion foldouts you click on any one of the bars and that will expose, that will show you, like opening a drawer, what those properties are. Now you probably noticed that when I put in the caption initially, it had a blue box around it. Okay, and the blue box is entirely optional. In fact, the blue box by default looks like this as a square box, but if I click this button here, you can see it immediately has an arrow. So I can change and give it different directional arrows if I choose to. I can also use this drop down menu to choose different looks and feels. Here's an Adobe pop up, for example. Maybe I want it to have that kind of look and feel overall. Might want to change the color and so forth and so on. I can also choose transparent, and that will make it so that there's no background at all, just as if I'd inserted text with no kind of background at all. In the later session, we'll talk about how I can use this browse icon to go out and get my own artwork to decide what I want that background to look like. So there's really no limit to what your background can look like. And of course, you can also have your background be completely transparent. For now, I'm gonna go back to the default to the Adobe Blue and just put it in the square mode just so that we can see it quite clearly, okay? All right, now the next one down is the character options. And you'll see here in the character options, I have the ability to choose from any of my favorite fonts and I can choose the style and let's just use a style that we're sure has alternatives so that you can see that because I know that you're new to it. Here you can see we choose Arial. Arial has narrow as an option, but it also has all of these other styles as options. We'll select regular Arial and then let's make it a little bigger so that we can see it nice and clearly. We'll make it a size 24. Oh, that's very nice. And you see here that the, the uh, text caption automatically resized itself. It's possible for you to set a preference that makes the text caption not resize itself. So that's entirely up to you as well. Down below here, you can see I have the choice to give it a bold or an italic or an underline. Now I'd also point out to you that with the new text form, you can choose those from the style options as well. And in general, that's a better approach. So if you wanted to have a bold, I would choose it here from the drop down menu. Doing it twice, can give you kind of fuzzy edges. You see how that does it? So it's bold and it's bold. It can actually deprecate the quality of the font. Wow, that sounded really official. That just means that it makes it look a little worse, right? Okay, and then finally I can choose things like the color. Maybe I wanna make the color a nice gray color. Oh, that looks lovely. Absolutely fantastic. Now I can close that accordion fold and then go down here to the format. Now the format will allow me to change things like move it over to one side, adjust whether it's at the top or at the bottom. Here, let me widen that so you can see what that looks like. So here at the bottom, in the middle, or at the top. Now that caption is auto resizing for me. So that's why when I press that button, it's automatically resizing the caption to the ideal size. You can also justify it to the left, justify it to the center, justify it to the right, or justify it across the entire 
size of the piece. I'm going to put mine back to the left just so that I can show you this indentation. I can increase the indentation from the left hand side and move it over a little bit if I want to get a little wider margin, no problem at all. Okay, now I'm going to put it back to center because I think that's the way that I want it to be. I have a couple of other options here. I could put in bullets, line numbering, and so forth and so on. I can also adjust the line spacing, give it a different amount of line spacing between lines. Depending on how I want to do that, I just click on that button and increase the number. You'll see down below here that I also have the option to insert a couple of these elements. That's actually allowing me to insert either an irregular symbol, like a, a character symbol. So if I had a special symbol I wanted to put in, like, oh, maybe I wanted the euro symbol in there, I could do that, right? And, of course, you can also put in a variable. Now, we'll talk about variables at a later point, but it's good to know for now that it's there and you have the option to insert variables right here from the format options. All right, now the last one of those that has to do with how it looks is the position and size. Now here you can see the position and size. This asks that I constrain the proportions and that's going to make it so that if I try to make it wider, it's automatically going to make it higher. Let's try that now. I'll do 240, make it a little wider. Notice how at the same time it made it proportionately higher. If I uncheck constrain proportions and then I try to set it back to 200, boom, it does not change the height. So that's basically what that means. This X and Y are terms used commonly in multimedia to describe the horizontal and the vertical position of the object. So X means 63 pixels over to the right hand side is where we'll find the first or the left hand edge of the caption. If I move it to 50, it'll move left. Watch. If I move it to 70, it'll move right. Okay. So that X is moving the left-right orientation of the piece, and Y, of course, is going to move the up and down. Let's change that to 70 so we can see it. And, of course, you can also just click on the object and drag it on the screen if you prefer to. So lots of good ways to do that. All right, so now we've seen the elements that affect how the caption looks. Let's take a quick look at these, how it behaves, okay, how it behaves. Those options are the timing option and the transition option, okay? Now the transition option is one of those options that really gets a lot of beginning users. Note that by default, captions have a transition that asks them to fade in and fade out automatically, automatically, okay? Now oftentimes you don't want that to happen at all, so you can just say no transition. Or you might want them to fade in, but at the end of the slide you have various reasons for not wanting them to fade out. So you might say fade in only. You could also do the opposite, have it fade out only. Now in our case, I'm going to have it do no transition. No transition. That's going to be the most eloquent solution for us. Okay? All right, so we've got our transition taken care of. What about the timing? Well, the timing determines how long that caption will display. Now inside your Captivate project, you have slides in a series. Those are displayed in the film strip. So if we looked at the film strip, we'd see a series of slides. Here we have only one. I'm going to press Control shift v and add another one. Okay, when I add that second one, I now have two film strip uh, uh, slides, right? And each one has its own timeline. Here's my timeline, and you can see it's three seconds long, and I display this caption for the entire three seconds. If I wanted to display the caption for less time, I can just click on it and drag it here. That would mean that when it played back, the caption would appear for two seconds and then disappear for the last one second. Okay. Likewise, I could have the caption appear after one second. See how when I run the playback head, I see nothing for one second and then it appears. It doesn't fade in because what did we do? We told it no transitions. Okay. So I can say I want it to display for a specific time. I can enter the time, specific time, that I want it to display for. I can also say that I want it to appear after a certain amount of time. I can say zero, for example, if I want to. And notice how I've extended my slide to four seconds by adding that one second when we were at the, at the one second in mark, okay? So here I've aligned my slide timing to the slide, the timing of this individual caption, and that will make those two things happen in sync. All right. Now, with this caption selected, I've got the ability to work with the timing. Note the drop-down menu. I can also say, hey, 
just play it for the rest of the slide you just click this button to do that or a great shortcut to learn I'm going to click on specific time and just show you when I press control E on my keyboard that automatically extends it and puts it out to the rest of the slide okay you can also display something for the rest of the project and that will cause that element this caption in this case to display all the way through on every single slide in this position just as it is all the way to the end of your project so you can do that as well okay so that is how it behaves and then finally how it sounds how it sounds now notice you have the option to fade in or fade out the audio here on the how it sounds part and you can also add audio what's important to note here is because the caption is selected if I add audio I'm actually adding audio to this specific slide right all I have to do to do that is press this button immediately an audio recording facility comes up I press this button to begin the recording or I can import audio or I can bring in audio from the library that's already there so I have a host of possible ways to associate audio with this object audio associated with an object like a caption in Captivate will begin to play the moment that the object appears on the screen okay so the moment the object appears on the screen the audio will begin to play all right so now we've seen what a caption is a caption is a way to display text we can alter the appearance how it looks we can alter its behavior how it behaves what kinds of uh, actions occur and so forth and so on um, and then finally we can alter where it is on the screen all right hope you learned something